Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have something a little bit different. This is called the Mini DSO. It's a, it's basically a mini oscilloscope. Um, it is a digital oscilloscope here and it's called the DS212. Uh, I guess that's a generic name. I don't know. I'm, I'm guessing the company is E-Design here. I've never heard of them before, but I really wanted this. I really wanted a pretty cheap but good one and I, from reading the specs it seemed pretty good and this is the reason why I got it and um, it seems pretty promising. This is going to be very good because if, if I find it to be pretty darn good, then we'll use it to actually, I'll, I'll show you guys how to debug components such as flight controllers, ESCs, and all that kind of crazy stuff. Possibly even cameras depending on what kind of trigger levels it has. Uh, we can go through that together. So this is going to be like an unboxing and first use. What we're going to do is we're going to unbox this guy. And we are going to take a look at the different protocols from our flight controllers. Multi-shot, one-shot, D-shot. And uh, just take an overall look at it and see how it goes. So let me crack this guy open and let's get started. Alright, so let's just do this together. Um, I was going to skip over this, but I'm just so excited about this. It's like, it's like, Chris, I don't know, I just look, look at the packaging. It just looks so nice. It looks like a gift. Ta -da. And I did a kind of already cheat here, but that's fine. So this is where we get the device. And let's leave this for a little bit later, actually. Let's take a look at what it comes with inside here. So we get our instruction manual. Okay, that's nice. Chinese and English, I guess. We do get some kind of one probe here. Yes, this seems like a probe. Yep, that's a probe. And this might also be another probe of some sort. I think two probes these are, two possible two probes. I'm not sure, but we will take a look at them a little bit. We get some kind of key. This is gonna probably be used for something. So let's go ahead and move this to the side now. Okay, and let's get this guy out. So as you can see here, it's pretty nice actually. Uh, we do have, it's a two channel. And this is out for possibly like a trigger or something. And uh, we do get, it's USB. It does have a built-in battery you could charge. And here is gonna be our selectors up here. And this is where our on is, on switch. And this is if we wanted to stop the trigger to actually take a look at it. So let's go ahead and boot this guy now. I mean, it looks pretty nice. It did have a screen protector, but I removed it. All right, so before we get any further, let's actually set up one of the probes here because we're going to start probing. Our first test is going to be probing and checking the different protocols that our flight controllers produce and to see how they are. So let's just take a look at this stuff here. Okay, so what is this? Right. And Okay, so as you can see those two go in together like so. And you have this here. So this might kind of confuse you, but don't worry. This is ground actually. So this is how ground would go. Okay, so we'd actually stick that through there. Just let me just take a look at it because I don't want to break anything. So it just goes in, and then you're gonna have to push it because it's gonna grab around the outer part like so. So this is gonna be our ground, and this would be whatever signal we are going to be using. And what you can do is you can also remove this. If you take a look here, you do have um, basically those sharp points. So you can just, um, you know, just probe it. But however, we're gonna be using this head. You just click it on and you see that hook so that's good and now we have to figure out which side okay it's very simple so the threaded side is going to go in here so they only provide you with one of these kinds of probes but that's usually more than enough this is a two channel one so it's, it's not expected to be like just no hardcore use by the way these are silicone wires are not hard they're very nice um so that's very good and they seem like they're shielded so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use channel a so Let's see, these are like mini BNC connectors or something. Just double check this guy. Yeah, you just push them through. There's nothing special about it. So we just push that guy through. Okay. And now we have it connected. So let's just zoom out here a little bit. All right. And what we are going to do is we're going to get our flight controller. Okay. And we are going to get ground, as you can see here negative this whole row which is my red wire see the bottom one and this is signal one so this is, would be motor one so this is the how the signal would look uh, when the motor when the ES when the flight controller is sending the command to the ESC see as you can see this is ground and that's going to be our motor one and now what I'm going to do is connect this via USB to boot it up or just wait a little bit let's actually boot this guy up first so let's just do that real quick and just easy switch boots up hella fast by the way so I still don't know how to actually um, turn off the channels here but um, I'll probably figure that out 
So we want we actually want to go lower than that. So this is five volts for division is 0.1 50 volts. Okay. This goes down the menu. Okay. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna see how we could turn this guy off. So this is giving us our measurements right now. And this gives us another page. Okay. Calibration options, page one oscilloscope. Okay, we wanted to kind of see how we could turn off the, oh, there it is, enable, I see it. So there it is, okay, there we go. Okay, so we turned off channel two because we're not gonna be using it. And uh, okay, that's good. Okay, so that's perfect. And then, okay, so we're not using that. We're gonna set it on 0.5, which is half of a volt right now. So we are listening on signal one, and we are grounded. And now I'm gonna plug power to the flight controller, and we take a look at this guy. I'm just, I'm very curious. All right, guys. So the signal it should be coming out as a idle speed or off from the flight controller to the ESC, and we should be seeing it here. Everything is connected correctly. Now, currently we are listening on channel A, which is the blue line here, and we want to drop this down as low as we can go, which is 0 0.20, oh, 20 millivolts. So this is 20 millivolts, and we're kind of seeing something here. So what we want to do is we're going to go down to the time base. So now every square uh, horizontally is 10 microseconds. So we're going to increase that a little bit. So it's going to be every square. So here we're starting to see something here. All right. So right now we're around, I think we're 0.2 milliseconds here. Um, so that's going to be how much? 200, 200 nanoseconds, I think. Yeah, 200. No, no, 200 microseconds. All right. <clears throat> and now let's go to the motors tab. And we're just going to take a look. For example, we're just checking if this is actually sending a signal. Can you see that move? That's me moving it on the motors tab. So let's increase this quite a bit. But the memory is going to start dropping. It's going to get slower a little bit here. Alright, so this is PWM anyways. We don't want to look at PWM because who uses PWM still? So let's go to configurations. We're going to look at uh, one shot one two five. Save and reboot. And motors tab. So as you can see, this is one shot one two five. Did you see how long PWM was? That was that's it was that's why it was super slow. And one shot one two five is a lot faster, and the D shots are a lot faster, and the multi shot is faster. Now, as you can see, this is this is the, the whole command right here. So let's just zoom in a little bit. So right now, each square is 20 microseconds here, and that is what it's taking to relay idle. So right there, as you can see how many squares. So now we're just going to hit it and save to go full throttle. And yeah, I'm in the motor tab, and it's working. Zero, full, in the middle. Where's middle? There's middle. And so yeah, that's pretty cool. It's actually working. However, I expected a little bit more resolution. Like on my oscilloscope, you, I could probably make this like that high. But I mean, you're only paying $100. So you really can't expect much. But I'm very impressed that it's able to do this. If it dropped down to 5 millivolts, it would have been super awesome. But however, this is still going to be good. We can still see if we're going to have any issues anywhere. And um, it's totally usable here, uh, especially for our, our next Arduino project. And uh, it's going to be pretty fun, pretty interesting as well. So as you can see here, actually, I don't know if I went over the trigger. So it does have, it only has two triggers, a rising edge and falling edge. We have rising here because uh, we want it to start when it rises, not when it falls, because it's, that's where our data starts. So what we want to do is you would go down. So this would select something from the menu. You push down on it and then let's go. So let's just say this one here. It's a bit difficult because if I'm carrying it like this, it'll be a lot easier. But here I'm just trying to do it so you guys can see everything. So here's trigger and uh, auto mode, you could normal, single, this will capture the first one that it sees and uh, yeah, so we want it auto and trigger mode, yep, that's perfect, so yeah, and then you see it says stop because it's triggered and then we click this and it'll continue again, so we can stop and start, you can take a look at the uh, signal here and do whatever you want, so let's say for example, we wanted to see how long it takes to say full throttle. Let's pause it. We're going to go down to cursor. So let's choose cursor here. I'm actually going to carry it this time. It's going to be easier for me. All right. We're going to turn on the time cursor. And then let's go down. Okay. As you can see, this 
line is moving here we want to line it up to the beginning of the dot right there beginning of the thingy and there we go we have another one however we need a little bit so we can say around right here all right perfect so that is taking roughly okay so we have to just do a little bit more As you can see it wasn't fully there it was like about here let's take a look now that's around correct yeah so it i know for sure on full throttle it's 250 microseconds um however here i have it like a little bit over so it's telling us the time for it to say full throttle is 256 microseconds so it's totally usable it's very good um and yeah i'm very happy i'm very pleased with it however you know this is not super super sensitive so don't expect something like you know, something's gonna cost you 400, 500 bucks, or even a thousand, some of you are even $10,000. So don't expect that, you're only paying 100 bucks, and um, it's doing the job just fine, especially for our little project that we're gonna be using, and uh, you know, Arduino and this stuff. And for this, this is still pretty damn good that we can see this here. Uh, you know what, let's give it another try, let's look at the D-Shot, which is the digital protocol. That should be a bit of a challenge here for this guy. So there's a couple things you can do to increase its speed. So first, let's drop the speed here. Keep it 20 microseconds. Okay, we're gonna try to keep it 20 millivolts. And let's go ahead and change the D shot. Uh, we're gonna go to D shot. We'll go to D shot 600. That's gonna be pretty fast. So, PID loop, gyro loop, we're gonna set them to 4K. Save and reboot. So, currently we're running 4K, 4K. And uh, as you can see right there, it's doing pretty well. So, all right, so it's it's a bit difficult, really, actually, to make out what it's saying here. Okay, there. Oh, there we go. So we need to push that guy a little bit. So let's just go down to window. Time I push it, actually move it. All right, so there we go. We got our signal right in the middle, and uh, we can we can do is we can actually drop this down, which makes it faster. We'll just keep it 8K. So that's just basically the resolution. I'm gonna drop this back a little bit here. That's perfect right there. And uh, let's just take a look at the motor tab now. So I'm gonna start increasing and uh, decreasing. However, as you can see here, the lines are not square because this is not fast enough to catch those. Um, for example, my big oscilloscope, you could actually see these as like long squares, like basically on and off. This is just going a bunch of squiggly lines here. And let's just actually do a pause here. All right, so we just stopped it. Okay, so we got an idea just to make sure. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna increase the speed. It's pretty good, but it's not readable 100%, but it's actually seeing us making the changes. So right now this is on zero throttle. This is full throttle. You can see a difference. Now I'm gonna move slowly down from 2000 to 1000 the motors tab here. Zero, that's it. And I'm, I'm gonna move up to full. And there we go. So yeah, it is working, it's seeing something. And um, it's very good. So we actually, you can measure and see if um, your signal pad is broken on your flight controller which is a super big plus and later on i'll show you i'll show you how to set it up and uh, actually test for your bad escs and also possibly check for bad motors we're going to take a look at that either also i'll see how good that'll be for debugging those kinds of things and possibly even fpv cameras so yeah so i mean that's concluded for this video guys i really hope you guys enjoyed it uh we are going to be using this on other projects to just do little tiny fun debugs and see how overall how good this is and so far it seems pretty good uh you're only paying a hundred dollars so don't forget there's nothing super awesomely insanely crazy it's just um yeah it's just a little oscilloscope it's a little tiny cheap oscilloscope and it's kind of doing the work i mean i don't expect it to do this much here so that's very good in that perspective it's not the most powerful and they're not telling you it's the most powerful and um i really like the overall execution of it to be honest it's very nice
All right, guys, so what are my thoughts and what do I feel about this? Well, actually, it's very good. I expected a little bit more, but you're only paying $100. Um, I'm very happy to see that we could actually see the ESC protocol uh, coming out of the flight controller, even though it's not super detailed, but we can see the throttle changes, which is very good. That's one step into debugging. That's one thing we'll be definitely debugging on the channel with this, and also FPV cameras. I do have a couple that are broken, some with from hard impacts, all of them from hard impacts, some with broken lenses, some with no damage that's apparent. So we'll be taking that later on into some kind of debug and fixing uh, tutorials as well as just, you know, just to get over a better understanding of everything so uh, you know what to look for next time. Now, um, I'm very satisfied with this. Like I said, I'm a little bit disappointed, but I'm very satisfied. It did the job just fine. Um, for example, if we had an issue on, if we thought we had an issue on the signal one here, now we know we don't because as you saw in the motors tab, we actually saw the throttle changes on the different protocols. So that's very good. Another another example which where we could use this is for example, um, I don't know, you ripped off the motor one pad and you're gonna do some resource mapping here in beta flight and you put motor three on your LED signal. Just an example here. Um, what I would recommend you do actually is to set your probe onto the uh, LED signal where you think you have rerouted motor three to be and just start playing with the motors tab and seeing if it changes. If it doesn't change, I would highly recommend not connecting the ESC to it until you have solved that issue because you could probably have routed it to the buzzer or something and um, if you think it went to the buzzer just take that probe put it there see if it's there if it's there it's working good then just stick it right on there um, however these are just example uses here uh, and like I mentioned we're also going to be doing some kind of debugging um, tutorials and, and, and components here on the channel and I really want to see how far we can take this guy and I want I'm actually going to be doing it with this guy if it's possible if it's any good uh, because this is going to be a very very good debug tool on the channel and obviously if you pay more you'll get some a little bit better but overall it does the job just fine um, it's not going to be for some you know highly you know just super high kind of testing it's good it'll get the job do job done for every for the everyday user really so Overall, I'm very satisfied with it. It's a hundred bucks. Um, didn't take long to get here. It does have an internal battery. Uh, the product itself feels very nice. This this is, I think, metal. It's not plastic, that's for sure. You can hear it. Uh, so that sounds pretty good. It does have an internal battery, and it's very simple to use. Once you figure out which one's for what here, these little sliders, um, they're going to be very good. So you just get, like, two selectors that are... You could just push them and select here. So you get two of these and you just get a power on and a trigger stop and start. And look how fast it powers on. Absolutely quick. However, you know, one downside so far is it doesn't remember what you left your last settings on. So that could be one downside. But I'm pretty sure we can uh, update the firmware on this and you, you could definitely do it. It's just simple. You just hold the trigger button up here and power it on. And as you can see, this is device firmware upgrade. We are in DFU mode, and um, it'll just wait for you to drop a hex file, and you should be good to go. So overall, um, I can't say this is a, a bad buy. I'm actually very happy with this, and I really want to kind of get you guys into electronics more and help you debug your components instead of throwing them away. Um, just because, you know, it's, it's, it's even better. You know, just know that you've done something, you've fixed something, and this experience will translate to other things in your life i guarantee you um drones have taught me so much so has arduino and arduino will be coming very soon on the channel uh possibly next video after this so um and this is going to be very good for that for debugging stuff so i mean that's all i could really say right now if you guys have any questions or any suggestions feel free to let me know and i will see you next time see you guys take care